Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark Yeah, yeah, peeling back the layers, expose the hidden mark oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Getting into minds of the wicked, no alibi LTL true crime, unraveling the web of evil No stone left unturned, we diving to the pond Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime LTL true crime, unveiling dark realities every time Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark yeah. Peeling back the layers, exposed to him more oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Getting things to mind, something wicked, no alibi Hey, I think they true crime Who know what dark realities every time It was a cold one out there today. I want to welcome everybody into LTL True Crime. We're live here on Thursday evening, February 29, 2024. Welcome into the live show and uh, welcome to everybody that is new here on the channel. We just picked up, uh, oh boy, almost uh, about 40 new subscribers in the last uh, couple of hours. So welcome into LTL True Crime. We're mostly a live channel where I stream probably like 95% of the content on this channel uh, and drop videos at random. So welcome in. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about um, Brockton High. We're going to get back into that and why it's fresh. We had some fireworks over there at the last school committee meeting. Uh, and I want to just kind of talk a little bit about it. I just have a lot of things on my mind to say. Um, you know, look, I, I think it's pretty apparent that the school is absolutely out of control at this point. And, you know, we had the the four committee, meet, com, uh, committee members about a week ago stand up at a podium outside Brockton High School and called for the National Guard. There was no control over there. I mean, there's absolutely the violence at Brockton High School is out of hand. Um, it goes to Mayor Sullivan. It goes to Governor Healy. And they deny it. <laughs> they deny it. They said that this is not going to be the way that it has to be uh, taken, taken care of and that they are going to work through these problems together and get the policies in place to get this uh turned around quickly. You know, I just I don't see how this is going to get turned around quickly. And, you know, what I'm understanding when I'm listening to these meetings, you know, one, it looks like no one can ba balance a budget. <laughs> we know about a budget deficit of $14.4 million. We'll talk about that. It looks like there's no true leadership at all. Uh, you now have Mayor Sullivan uh, fighting with the once on leave uh, once on medical leave, but now on paid leave, Superintendent uh, Michael Thomas, they had a spat the other night at the end of the meeting. We're going to watch that. I mean, it's just completely out of control. But I do I do see this. I do see a smite, a smite, a, a slight glimmer of hope for Brockton High. One, you have a new principal that just came in. 
uh, McCatskill, Principal McCatskill. And I love when he speaks. I think he has a great vision for the school. And also they do have a new police chief, Brenda Perez. And I think those are going to be the two rising talents in all of this. The people that are hired, they're, they seem very well structured and organized. But it's going to come down to what is Sullivan and Healy going to allow them to do. Um, and I can only imagine that both new incoming into those positions, the amount of stress that are weighing on their shoulders right now. But let's talk a little bit about, uh, we'll get a little bit more into this. Uh, so we'll get, <laughs> this was uh, this was crazy. So you had tempers flare the other night at the school committee meeting. We're going to play a little bit more of that meeting tonight. And I want to highlight uh, Principal McCatskill as well too, because I want you to all hear what type of leadership um, and confidence that he brings to Brockton High. And I really, truly believe in him. I think that he could make some very positive changes there, but it's going to be up to what they're going to allow him to do. But let's play this first. Tensions absolutely boiling over at this meeting tonight. There was shouting at the end of the meeting. There was also some cheering inside this school when the superintendent got up to speak. I'm going to talk now, about the Superintendent Mike Thomas, Mike Thomas, who's been tonight, on medical too. leave since August. That leave coincided with the revelation of a $14 million deficit in the district. He now says he's well enough to come back and he denies wrongdoing, but the school committee voted to put him on paid leave during an investigation of district finances. Now, the crowd tonight was clearly on his side and says safety would not be an issue if he were in charge. The mayor is vowing transparency in that investigation. Mike Thomas was here. This stuff at the high school, you know would not be. One, I don't like people that talk about themselves in the third person. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more about about Mike Thomas. Some very odd timing when he takes this medical leave, and you know he says, "Oh, the violence isn't gonna happen here if Mike Thomas was uh, in charge right now. If Mike Thomas was the superintendent." Well, let's test that theory, Mike Thomas, because your roots go back to becoming deputy deputy superintendent back in 2013. And I'll take you through a little bit of a chronological order while you were deputy superintendent and then promoted to superintendent in 2019. And let's see if those problems in Brockton High wouldn't be happening uh, if you were in charge. I'm going to show you some of that here. Hang on. Not a chance. I was not made aware of a fiscal 23 deficit. Which is a lie. the date of August 8th. And that's a fact. Which is a lie. Is there a motion to adjourn? And what if people do? Second. What happens? What happens when people don't want to face questions or consequences? Meeting adjourned. We're out of here. We're going. See you later. That's how he treats the public. This is the mayor. This is the mayor because he didn't want to answer the hard questions. So see you later. We're adjourning. Peace. Let's play this back a little bit. Is there a motion to adjourn? We knew. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All in favor? All opposed? Have a good night. Have a good night. So the meeting ending abruptly there as the mayor was getting some pushback on that investigation from the crowd. In terms of safety in the district, a lot of ideas here tonight from the community, but no decisions made here. Yeah, it is a coincidence. Live in tonight, John Atwell, now, WCVB News. Uh, John, thank you for that. He's back around, right? Because the questions are out there and it's been put out there in the public that there was uh, some inklings around there, some whispers that there was embezzlement. And we're going to hear him speak about that. But I want to get on uh, some of this article here. So let's go back to September 1st of 2023. So we have... Um, which this audit, I don't know where this audit is, it's supposed to be a financial audit in Brockton. The mayor announced it back, uh, I believe, in uh, August when he found out that the findings in August, and it, which is bullshit because there was someone that came out a year prior and told him about all of this, that they weren't, they were way overspending. But um, now it's saying, oh, we, we want to welcome this audit. Well, where is this audit? We're now in February of 2024. Where's the audit? Where's this, pri where's this private audit? So it says here, the, uh, the enterprise, I welcome any audit. Brockton School Superintendent speaks out amid embezzlement rumors. 
So you have Brockton Superintendent of Public Schools, Mike Thomas, uh, takes full blame for the $14.4 million deficit in last year's school budget. But he said empathetically that there was no embezzlement or missing money. Every dime was spent to help kids and support kids and staff for Brockton High School, Thomas said in a Friday night phone interview with Enterprise. Everything is well documented. Thomas said the overspending was mostly in staffing, transportation, and security. Let's go. I, I have to read that again. Staffing, transportation, and security. Well, two things that pop out to me there, two things that pop out to me there, staffing and security. You've now said that you've spent $14.4 million on staffing and security. I would think, I would think that if you have an abundance of staff, you have enough staff that they would be able to secure the high school and you would have the proper amount of people hired in those positions for security. Where I don't, I don't understand. I, I mean, I, I'm not a, a, a CPA. I'm not a mathematician, but I, I don't understand the problem here. It, it seems to me the leaders in that community, Sullivan, Thomas, they can't balance a budget and they're not true leaders. And what I see now in those committee meetings is they're kicking the can down the road. Everybody's pointing the finger at everybody else. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Now, now Sullivan and uh, Thomas are going at each other. And you're going to see a little bit of that here uh, later here in the, in the, in the program. So uh, let me just bring this up a little bit. More. I take sole responsibility. I don't know what happened here. Let me go back. He says, uh, I take, let's see. I take sole responsibility for that said Thomas and his, uh, and, who is on an abrupt announced medical leave, extended medical leave. I'm the superintendent of schools and I can't overspend the budget. So why are you taking this mystery all of a sudden medical leave? You know that the, the shit's going to hit the fan and all of a sudden you take a medical leave. Now, look, I, I don't want to question, say things. Timing seems a little weird to me. Timing seems a little bit weird to me. But now that this audit is kicked back up, he's going to pop up and say, hey, I'm fine. Um, and I, I'm willing to be audited. Doesn't make any sense. Timing's weird. Doesn't make any sense. Let's go here. So now we go to uh, September 3rd, 2023. Brockton superintendent said he overspent school's budget, but deficit handling uh, but de defends handling of finances. I'm sorry I've put the school department in the city in this situation, said Brockton Superintendent Michael P. Thomas, who was on medical leave. And that was September 3rd, 2023. Brockton High School Superintendent Sunday, Sunday defended his handling the city school's budget after local leaders learned of a roughly $14, point, uh, 14 million dollar short shortfall in last fiscal year's budget just days after classes resumed, denied any fraud and said that he is acting in the best interest of student and staff. Superintendent Michael P. Thomas said soaring costs in the areas like out-of-district student placements, transportation, and staffing forced him to overspend this year's $229 million schools budget. I am sorry to put the school department in the, in the city in this situation. Thomas said in a phone interview on Sunday morning. I overspent the budget and I'm not going to apologize for doing that and, and doing anything I could I could to meet the needs of our students and the support staff and the support and I support them every single day. You know who ends up suffering in the end of the day in all of this? You know who ends up suffering in the end of the day in all of this? The kids. The kids. Because the kids have to go into that environment. And I'm not saying every student at Brockton High School is out of hand. I'm probably pretty sure that a majority of them are, are acting within uh, the behavior that they should be showing while going to school. But clearly, this is a problem. And what you're going to see tonight, the way that this meeting went, and some of the people that are so out of touch with the situation there, uh, I don't think this is going to get fixed anytime soon. And we all know the, the, the saying, 
things are going to get drastically worse before they get better. Let me take you to this article here. Uh, let's see. So, like I said, everybody's saying, well, I had no, I had no idea. No one knew anything. No one had any idea. September 11th, 2023, uh, Seven News in Boston uh, publishes an article and says, Whistleblower claims he repeatedly warned Brockton officials about school district finances and situation. So it goes, uh, Christopher Career has worked 22 years as the Brockton Public Schools Assistant Finance Officer. As, a, as the word got out that the district overspent its 2023 budget by $14 million, though Career was put on paid leave. See, now attorney Tim Burke said that his plans to file a whistleblower lawsuit against the city of Brockton and its school committee on Career's behalf, claiming Career sounded alarms, but, but the district overspent for months. He has been cast in the light. Somehow he didn't do his job when he was just the exact opposite, Burke said. The only one doing their job who the public could be commending is Chris Career. Burke recently provided nearly 20 of Career's emails dating back as far as July of 2022 about issues with the public school's budget. One email on July 21st, 2022 explains in part, we cannot continue to enter into contracts that haven't accounted for in the current budget. If we don't get a handle on transportation budget and address the management issues in that department, we're headed for a very serious budget shortfall in fiscal 2023, career warns in one email and on October 29th, 2022. You have emails. They're in print. You can't fake that. You can't make that go, go away. This guy sounds like he was sounding the bell for well over two years. Two years. In an email dated March 28th, Career offered a suggestion. We continue to receive police detail in invoices for traffic duty, he said. I recommend that we terminate these details. The budget cannot support these additional expenditures. On July 27, 2023, Carrera raised a red flag. Now, this is this is almost a week away from when the mayor said that he was first notified on August 8th, I think it was August 8th, of this budget deficit. On July, uh, on July 27, 2023, Carrera raised red flag saying we cannot afford to pay staff that we are not budgeted. This is beyond irresponsible. He has been made, quote, he has been made the scapegoat, and if you will, for all the failures of his supervisors in both the city and school district levels, Burke said. Mayor Brockton, that's Robert Sullivan, announced the $14 million budget deficit late last month. That was in August. The questions of what school officials knew and when officials knew such information is now under investigation. That's a major, com that's a major communication issue. Major communication issues. Major leadership issues, major money management issues. That's why we're in the position. That's why Brockton High is in the position that it is right now. And all these people are doing now is coming back and fighting tooth and nail for their job. It's time for the, the, the citizens of Brockton to wake up. And this is why I always say this. It's very important for you all to understand what's going on in your local communities. Because people like this run your communities. It's time to get out there and look at these candidates that are running for these specific offices. That are people that are going to be your leaders. People that are going to budget your schools. People that are going to budget your town finances. You cannot continue to let people like this slip through the cracks because, oh, oh, he's been around for 30 years. And you're going to hear Mike Thomas at the end of the school committee meeting. I've been around for 30 years. Big deal. Have you been getting the job done? Well, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Speaking about the issue, Sullivan said that he's more focused on getting to the bottom of how the deficit came about and keeping the schools running. Dude, you've had so August, September, August, September, November. Uh, you had almost six months, six months to figure out what's going on. 
where is th this audit that you talk about? How hard is this? As the mayor and the product of Brockton Public Schools, my goal right now is how to fix it and make sure it can never happen again. This is six months ago now. These are quotes from the mayor six months ago. The Brockton School Committee on September 1st voted to hire an independent investigator to look into the 2023 budget and determine what went wrong. The committee's meeting in turn came on a day after spokesman for the Brockton Public School said Superintendent Mike Thomas informed the school committee that he needed to take an extended me medical leave. In addition to the to a pri to a, the private investigator, the school's committee on September 1st voted to appoint Dr. James Cobbs, which he's been a disaster as well, too, for the last six months, just judging by what's going on in those committee meetings when you hear him talk. As an acting superintendent, Thomas later spoke to Seven News, admitting he spent too much money on staffing while defending the decision decisions he made. I don't understand. Thomas comes back, walks through the door, and he's the white knight all of a sudden, and everybody's cheering for him. This guy don't know how to run a school either. This guy has no idea. Can't figure out budgets. Can't be a leader. Seven News asked Burke what career wants uh, wants as he files a whistleblower complaint in this case. Burke said that someone should take uh, financial financial responsibility. Well, Thomas comes back and says in his statement that if I was there and I was in control, that none of this violence would be going on. All right, well, let's see about that. Uh, he was deputy superintendent in 2013. He got promoted to superintendent in 2015. Uh, I mean, sorry, 2019. Here you go. Police, mother, daughter attacked 15-year-old Brockton High School student. That's in 2015. Here you go. 2019, video shows Brockton police breaking up teenage brawl. More than 100 teenagers from Brockton High School uh, gathered four teenagers under arrest, and now people calling some of the officers involved to be suspended. Large fight broke out. That's 2019. This is this is Mike Thomas. If he was there, this would not be happening. Here we go. Why do we need a gun detection system? 2019. This is under Mike Thomas. Brockton High School gets gunshot detecting system. I got another one, 2016. This is your deputy superintendent. Eight fights over two days at Brockton High School, 2016. But if he was there, this would not be happening. Now, again, I, I think there's some hopefuls. I think there's some hopefuls. The new police chief, Brenda, uh, Brenda Perez, very well spoken. Seems like she has a great pl plan for Brockton High School. How to secure it. I like Principal McCatskill, brand new. Let's hear him speak here. This is at the last at the last meeting. Mr. McCaskill. Good evening, everyone. Yes, we have started the in-house suspension of program. Started the week prior to the vacation. How's that going? It's a buzz around school now. <laughs> it's, it's definitely a buzz, and it's something in which I think we definitely need it. And I, I want to applaud our behavior interventionists who have been manning that, and they have been just simply nothing short of spectacular in doing it. And they are buying in. Students are coming in and being placed here for the wandering and other offenses. And we have had anywhere from 10 to 40 students in there on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And it, for, for our vantage point, it's it's doing its it's doing its magic. Mm -hmm. And we just got to stay very consistent with it. And it's something in which when that buzz gets around the school and you hear in the hallways, you better move because we don't want to go to in-house. Mm -hmm. I think it's having an impact on the school. Slowly but surely, it's having a, an impact on student students wandering in the hallway. We still have a ways to go with it. But again, I think it's a great start. Thank you. Mr. Rodriguez? From the moment that a student enters in our suspension, how is their day planned out? As far as you know, I, I, you know, doing their schoolwork, you know, how is the day planned out through from the morning they get in there to the end? If they're going in, let's say it is at the beginning of the day, they their work they have a work packet before they even start, and so it's some preliminary work. It gives them this general information. There's an intake that they do, an intake form that the staff 
performs. They are given a packet of work. That work, we actually have some help from our CTE director, Dr. Ferreira, and a lot of it's from a work, workforce development perspective packets so again and get them thinking about more career but that's also in lieu of the work that we also have of just identifying why you're here and mm -hmm. it's just a series of questions that only they can answer and it's like a personal profile for them going in so that really bides us some time until we can get the actual work from their teachers to really get the ball rolling so because sometimes those requests are not met within a certain time frame, but again, with the work that we have from Dr. Ferreira, which again, which is very pertinent and not just to just waste of time task oriented, but the preliminary work that we have with them really doing a self assessment of whether they're what, you know, where's it gotten them with their current behaviors, where are they going with this and really do some personal reflection and introspection. And it's proven to be pretty effective so far. And, uh, uh are the adjustment counselors, guidance counselors involved in the in-house suspension? We're getting we're getting to that. We're getting to that point. We're definitely getting to that point by just getting it up and running. We're getting kids really situated and understanding the rationale of why we're doing it and why they're there and as such. And I think that's an, eventually that tool. I think that other piece of it that you spoke of with the adjustment counselor and even the school counselors, I think we are pertinent part of it as well. All right, thank you. And someone asked why the in-school suspension had been stopped and um why was in school suspension stopped and don't quote me on the law but there was a law passed and i can't bring the article up because i'm not a subscriber in 2022 massachusetts law makes suspending students essentially more difficult because they need to have alternate remedies alternate remedies and i don't know why the what the name of the law that was put in place i think it's like one two two or or something like that maybe someone can look it up um and they have been talking about it but it's a specific law that was put into place here in massachusetts in school suspension and they said this this way of discipline is not working but i think i think mccatskill is going to do well at his job from what i see he seems well thought. He seems plan. Uh, he has to have a plan. He has a plan in place, and I can only imagine the amount of stress that is on his shoulders right now. The world is on his shoulders to fix Brockton High, but it's only going to come down to what the mayor and the governor are going to allow him to do. Ms. Azak, thank you, <clears throat> Principal McCaskill. Just a quick question. So you mentioned anywhere from ten to forty students. Um, do we have a plan for the repeat students that are constantly going into suspension? Do we look a little further out? You know, this is great to start, but do, are we gonna give them a little more attention, have some kind of a program, work with them? Um, those are the ones we really need to focus on, are the ones that are just gonna be repeat in, in house suspension. Um, that we, you know, another way to get through to them, to work with them. I think that's the piece in which we get when you involve the adjustment counselors and the such. I think that piece will be that you know, we can cut down on some of the recidivism that we may see going forward. So their work is going to be crucial to the success, not of the program itself, but most, most importantly, getting those students better acclimated into school. Thank you. And when did when did we start? I know you you were. When did oh, the actual in-house <laughs> suspension start? Was it last week? Every, yeah, the no, week I mean, two weeks week, ago? The week prior to, the week okay. prior to vacation. Mm -hmm. So that's not bad. I mean... Yeah. We, we, we have to start making changes mm -hmm. to start seeing a difference. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. I mean, that's I'm one hopeful. change. I think you know, the cat's going to be a little positive that we can look at I'm hopeful, to try to help yeah. our students think, rather absolutely. than, He's got you the know, tool watch them the stay back and not be, be able to move forward. Absolutely. So it's all about being there to help them. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Principal McCaskill. Um, yes. First of all, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I secondly, did you, did you have a, I, have I you gotta had give a chance, him a chance to see the updated cell phone policy? He seems I, like the only one there right now. Him and uh, Police Chief Perez, Brenda Perez, first uh, woman police chief, I believe, of Brockton. And she seems to have a very level head and uh, someone that can get control of the situation too. But it's it comes down to what is the mayor and the governor going to allow? allow them to do what power are they going to be able to have to fix the situation and the school committee board you know what are they going to allow them to do all right let's hear a little bit more from the cat school and then i want to take it out 
to about the last 40 minutes of the meeting the other night, and it gets really, really hot at the end of that meeting. You have Mike Thomas come come in. You have Mayor Sullivan that's there, and they go at it. And um, I also want you to see how the different dynamic of of people that just seem to be very in touch with the situation at Brockton High and a couple of people that just seem to be very out of touch with the situation at Brockton High. All right, let's play through this. I know that we had the original policy sure. and then Dr. Connors, I think she just spoke to you about this. And so I just want to kind of put it on record that at this point, you're going to have a chance to see the new cell phone policy and present it at the faculty meeting on Thursday so that at least we could hear some voices from the faculty because I think that's really important right now. And that, and that can definitely be on our agenda. Yeah, I, I would. I, I think a, that three pronged approach mm -hmm. between this um, faculty and like, unless we're all in this together, like, Absolutely. there's no way it's going to work. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So at this point, I want to just go around the room and see does anybody have any questions in regards to the new cell phone policy that we want to talk about? Oh, you're right, Turtle questions Cat, on, you know? Or you're right. Would we like Principal McCaskill to take this to faculty on Thursday mm -hmm. and then we revisit for final edits and be done with it by like end of business next week and we can roll it out? <sighs> Mr. Chairman? Dr. Dr. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the bags, I, I spoke to Lieutenant Governor the other day when she was the mayor of Salem. Salem High is a lot mm -hmm. smaller than Brockton mm -hmm. High, but it was very, Not even very comparable. Successful. In terms of what Mr. Rodriguez asked you, like a thousand would be like a, a test case, a pilot, right? right. How, how are they selected? How would the students be selected, those thousand students? Well, like I said, it'll start with the in-house suspension and then it'll, it'll we'll, we'll work right now with the policy you have is a three strike policy. Okay. They, they will have them in the, I'm just going to keep adding to that. Okay. Well, that, that allows us to get Get all of the equipment set up, the station for the magnets, and and and, and issue to the staff, train the staff up, and, and then have the people on site from the other to that part okay. of the, the package too for training the, the staff. Okay. So you know, for the we're, we're really training for the big opening to when we go policy goes school wide. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Cobbs. When do you uh, anticipate? between making the decision on the finalizing the policy. All right, so they were just talking about some budget planning, which it's something that they can't handle. Uh, but let's go to the last 40 minutes of that committee meeting the other night. This is where things get kind of really heated up. And you're gonna hear a man named John C. Williams get up and speak. And I believe from my research, he tried to run for mayor at one point and basically has been laughed uh, out of his community, but it seems like he's got his head on very straight seems like he has some great plans if he was in power to fix things at Brockton High. And I love his approach with the mentor program. And I think that we need a lot of that in Brockton. And you're going to hear about that talk. And if, again, if anybody knows John C. Williams, give him my email address. Have him reach out to me. I'd love to have him here on the show and talk about what's going on over there in Brockton. And then at the very, very end of this, you're going to hear um, Mike Thomas, the superintendent that came back from medical leave and then was actually put on suspended uh, paid leave during this committee meeting. Um, and then you're going to see Mayor Sullivan and Thomas kind of go at it here. So it, and we'll get a plan. And we'll get a view of the the out of touchness and the people that just get it. Piero, please. Drew Fontero. And I'll let you be the judge of the people that get it and the people that are just out of touch. You can type it here in the chat as we go. Hi, my name is Drew Fontero. Um, I lived in Brockton pretty much all my life and left when I was 17 years old to go pursue an acting career in Hollywood. Um, I would never have been successful if not for my teachers at Brockton High School, Salt Junior High School, and Huntington School. I give them thanks for everything they do. Um, it is because of Miss Oaken that I love reading with character. It's because of Miss Garvey that I love English. It's because of Miss Penny Knight and Miss Villani that I have a future in song and dance and everything like that. What you guys are hearing right now is that um, all these parents are harping and telling you guys different things um, because they're concerned. But really, the most important opinion that you guys uh, got to hear today was that young lady who was a student, and also you, thank you. I'm glad I followed you, because we have to ask the students what they want, what they need. ASAC, you're amazing, but putting them in orange sweaters as prisoners, they're not that. DECA is an amazing school program that creates merch and clothes for them. If they have improper clothes, we fit them in beautiful clothes that screams Brockton High School school spirit. 
okay? We don't punish them for that. We try something new, something different. I wrote a 16-page document about called the Brockton High School Initiative. It gives you guys all opportunities to change what you guys have been doing with your schools. Now, if you, real quick, Socrates once said, the secret of change yeah. is to focus all of your energy exactly. not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Okay? You guys are talking about taking cell phones away from students, yet you guys are thinking, basically what you guys are thinking is of what you do outside of the box, but you're not thinking of what you can do with that box. These students have cell phones. They're addicted to social media. They love the likes and all that sort of stuff. What about creating a program that utilizes the phone? What about them coming to school? And I don't know, when I was young, I used to have a program called, we had an app called Foursquare. And every time we got into one place, we checked in and it gave us points for checking in incentives. What if the students had an app that worked on their phone that could create incentives for the school? Every time they walk in, they get points, incentives, prizes, things that create school spirit. Stop talking down to them. Talk with them, ask them to come to you. They have perspectives and opinions that you guys- I'm gonna tell you right now, I just think this guy is a little out of touch. I'm gonna tell you, I've been in leadership positions, I've ran businesses, I've managed businesses, I've been the leader in that business, and no offense, no offense to any of the young people that are watching me, but to try to get any information out of a young person today, literally, I would ask them, what would you like to do? What would you like to do to change the situation? Or what type of things would you like to bring into this environment? You know what the answer I got? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I I'm going to tell you right now. You speak to these students, most of them are not going to talk. Is are not hip to because we are millennials, we are olders, we are boomers. These are Gen Zs and, and Gen Alphas. They will inherit Brockton, Massachusetts. If we don't give them the things to do, things that will enrich their mind and their heart, yo, they're going to abandon Brockton, Massachusetts. We got to create new programs. We got to create new dances, new art, art. We took art out of schools. Let's bring art back. I do agree with this. We need to give these students something, but it starts with them, not just you guys. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Remember that. I do agree. I think art programs do need to come back. I don't even know. They do physical education anymore. PE, PE is still part of the curriculum in, uh, in high schools. That should be back. Sports, youth sports. John give C. Them Williams, something please. To do. John C. Williams. I like this guy. This guy gets it. This is John C. Williams. Good evening, Brockton. Good evening. And I want to get this guy on my show. So if anybody knows John C. Williams, give him my email address. I'm putting it in the chat. I want to get him on this show. Caddy says, you're right, Brian. I hardly get my 14-year-old nephew to talk to me about stuff. Girls might be easier, but it just depends on the kid. Yeah, Scott says this is all liberal political crap. Discipline these kids, period. Put the politic politics aside. I have to agree with Scott. Discipline. Why is it so hard to put your foot down and say the two-letter word that no kid likes to hear? What is it? Type it in the chat. The two-letter word that no kid likes to hear. Type that in the chat. Let me know. Let me know what word I'm thinking of. It's two simple letters. Two simple letters. Two, two simple letters. What is it? Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> Don't do that. No. I like this guy right here. I'm glad I get a chance to speak tonight. <clears throat> I hear a lot of ideas. There's no policy you can make that can change what's going on. <laughs> yes, no, maybe one. no. There's nothing you can institute right now that's gonna change it tomorrow. We put in 
A lot. You did some due diligence, like Judy. You. you went and spoke to some teachers. And you know what they told you? We need champion city mentors. And you tried to explain to them, and they were like, oh, it's John Williams, so they didn't want to hear it, right? I hear you. So I listened to my brother Jamal speak and say he's willing to go into the school with mentors and men to patrol the hallways and stuff like that. The problem is you guys are only focused on Brockton High School because Brockton High School is the crown jewel that makes you your money. But this problem doesn't start at Brockton High School. It goes down to the lower levels. You're not going to go into Brockton High School, patrol the hallways, and fix it. That's Over 10 enough. years ago, I had a meeting with Mike Thomas. And we developed a long-term plan. You heard some people today say it. You heard some of my former colleagues, some, form, some teachers come up and say Brockton High School was a model school. We were leading the way, restorative justice, everything. 10 years ago, we had a meeting and we put together a program that spanned not only the high school, because in 2016, we had these same issues. People filming fights and it got real bad. And I got a call and I got asked to bring in community members. Some that are here today, I see William Wells, I see my wife, Linda Texera Rays that just spoke. See Roro Wilson right there. <laughs> Scott. We had people come into the school and build relationships from kindergarten to 12th grade. The worst students in your school right now we've had yep. since the third grade. Yep. But for some reason, political agendas in Brockton take precedence over children. Yep. You this all, guess, you, man. you, you, you all voted to get rid of this program that supported not only the students, we supported teachers, we supported administration. Ask how many conversations I've had with Sharon Walters, Michelle Connors, Mike Thomas, Mr. G back there. All of these are teachers that y'all claim to support, we actually went in there and did it. And we started doing it for nothing. So John, um, John C. Williams, I understand at some points, uh, throughout his history in Brockton, uh, tried to run for mayor and was kind of like laughed at and shunned out. But I mean, to me, sounds like you get some hell of some ideas. And he was doing some good, good things in the committee, in the community, and was pushed aside. Pushed aside. Was a, a community leader. For nothing. We went in there because we care. I was that student. He was that student. Ro was that student. We're from here. We're from Brockton. We came back into the school to help out the kids so they don't go down the same path we went. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We need to get real. Get rid of your political agendas. I agree, Tyrone. Get rid of your personal vendettas, whatever they are, and get people that have done the work on a consistent basis for the last 10 years. We're doing the work. I don't get paid a dime. I still got mothers calling me and I go to their house and I go work with those kids. I still see kids in the streets in the supermarket. What's up with school? You walked with me during, during the campaign. You saw how kids react to me. These are kids in the street and I can talk. Hey, what's up with your grades? Come here, sit down. We need kids to see people that look like their uncle. Yep. They look like their older brother. They look like their fathers. Because we have missing fathers. That's the thing. So when we have what have I always said? Fatherless homes. If you don't have the strong, uh, strong mother, fatherless home. People in the school that can adjust and adapt to these kids and talk to them and say, listen, hey, come here. You know what you need to do? You need to sit down real quick, shut up, and listen to this teacher. Because she's going to give you the key to success and if you think that ain't what it is you can ask any teacher in here that's had an experience with our program they'll tell you what it is do your due diligence and stop playing around we've already lost a generation of kids with all these games you're talking about funding you're asking for funding you just had 80 million dollars yeah. that you didn't put
put in your boy Chris Harmy's pocket. That y'all didn't win and spend on bucks. That y'all started the transportation department that's over budget every year because you weren't smart enough to see this is the transportation department. I love this guy. We're going to have to maintain these buses. We're going to have to sign contracts with drivers. And that, con- that driver's contract was horrible. You did a terrible job. All of you need to be done. I know it's an I know you don't want to hear anymore. Yeah, do your job. Do your job. Yeah. That's John C. Williams. He's kind of this community leader in Brockton. And um uh, like I said, I my research on him, he's he's ran for mayor before, but um kind of gets laughed at in the community, which is you know, well, by these school school committee members and these people that have voted into the political positions, they don't like him because you know why? He says the truth. He puts the truth out there and they don't like that. And that's why I love this guy. And I want to get John C. Williams on the show. So if anybody knows him in and around uh, Brockton, please give him my email address and have him reach out to me. I, I'd love to have him come on here and speak on the show and speak about Brockton of the, the political situation that's going on over there because uh, politics need to go aside. And like he was saying, in the end of the day, you know, who gets hurt in, at the end of the day? The students, the students and the teachers. But the ultimate suffers in this when this gets out of control like this is the kids. The kids suffer the most. Yeah, that's right. The quorum, please. We, right. we have another person, please. Michelle Henson, please. I will remain within my three minutes, but I'm going to be really direct to some of you. You heard that we had mentors and you thought that, well, we have formerly incarcerated people and they're not safe to have around our children. But you wanted to bring soldiers who don't know our kids, who don't give a damn about our kids, and you know the first child that showed out and touched up was going to get hurt, and you didn't think about that. And I did reach out to the four of you because I was very disappointed that it was you. I'm going to tell you this, too. I reached to all four of those committee members that stood up at that press conference, what, a week and a half ago? You know how many of them reached back out to me? Zero. Zero. Who wanted to bring this down on black and brown children. Now, if it was a stunt to get the attention. Yeah, I'm replaying the last 40 minutes because this is really when the fireworks spun up. And then there was a big fight at the end with uh, the, the, the former or, well, still employed superintendent mike thomas that's now on a pay, uh, suspension leave and then the mayor uh sullivan mayor sullivan so i just kind of want to play the last 40 minutes here Jin. okay i guess i can get yeah, that now won't. we have everybody's attention now and i yeah. can give you that <laughs> they are that's what the and what i didn't is. say at the beginning is i'm gonna give you the love of everybody in this room i have no hate but some of you have pissed me the hell off. Okay. You spent, you threw away money, you lost money. You don't want to take accountability. And as much as I love you, you need to take accountability. This is you. This is all you. And the rest of you who have been here long enough, Mrs. Sullivan, you have been here. Mrs. Ehlers, you are new, but as far as everybody on, on this Council, you are the one with some financial background. I looked at your LinkedIn, okay? So I expect more from you than the rest. So, and now that it, apparently you're still vice chair, time for us to have a conversation. I told you you would meet the dragon and you're about to. Thank you. So that, that concludes hearing and visitors. Agenda item five is a VHS safety update from our Brockton Police Chief, Brenda Perez. Chief. Okay, this is Brenda Perez. She's the newly appointed 
um, police chief in Brockton. Again, I want you to all hear her speak. She's got a plan. She has a plan and sounds like she's going to do very well at her job. Um, but it's just going to be, what is the mayor and the governor going to allow her to do? All right, let's play. Good evening, <clears throat> school committee members. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today regarding the security of Brockton High. I'm a proud alumni of Brockton High School and the daughter of immigrants and a lifelong resident of Brockton. As the police chief, hey, Jody, the you? safety of our school community Welcome is of paramount importance. Over the last few months, my team and I have collaborated closely with the mayor, superintendent of schools, school administrators, school principal McCaskill, school police officers, the district attorney's office, and the city solicitor. We recognize the many challenges we face and are exploring strategies encompassing prevention and intervention. Tonight, we'll be providing you with a security update on issues we have identified, along with some Please. recommendations for the school district. To gain a better understanding, we wanted to take a look at the frequency of calls for service over the last two years, examining crazy. both district-wide calls for service and calls specifically for Brockton High School. Listen to this number. You're going to fall off your chair. Schools, calls to Brockton High School. Listen to this. You're going to fall off your chair. Ready? During the preceding school year, we received approximately 1,100 calls for service for the entire district, with slightly over 80 calls for service for the high school. During this academic year, <clears throat> encompassing the data up until January 31st, the district has had just over 800 calls for service with approximately 40 calls of, to the Brockton High School. Calls for service within Brockton High School encompass a broad spectrum, and ranging from alarms to theft, to altercations, medical calls, missing persons. Our current trajectory appears consistent with, pre with the previous year. Given the, re the recent occurrences on school premises, it's imperative to uphold open communications across all administrative levels with Brockton Public Schools. And we urge staff to utilize either emergency 911 in the police non-emergency number to report any incident requiring our intervention. As a first issue, we wanted to discuss assessment to bolster security measures effectively. It's important that we adopt a proactive approach by conducting comprehensive reviews and assessments at regular intervals, ideally once every three years. Yeah. And looking at the school safety issues, I found the school district's most current security plan is approximately 10 years old. The Mass Chiefs of Police Association using the guidelines. He is spitting facts. You got major things wrong in Brockton High. She's throwing it out there on the table. And she's not going to be held responsible for the shit that goes down. She's not glad handing anybody. She wants to do her job. It's going to, like I said, it's going to come down to the mayor and the governor allowing her to do her job. She's got Alliance, a plan. By the Partnership like Alliance for Safe to Schools offers a comprehensive guide that just came out October of 2023 on how to achieve a greater level of security in schools. As the initial oh, thanks, step, Kat. it's recommended to assemble a, a multidisciplinary team consisting of the school of a school district security director as the head, IT specialists, integration experts, administrative personnel, community representatives, fire and, and law enforcement are part of that community oh, of representatives. Course, I, I would like to agree. pass out a copy to all of you so that you can take a look at what that composition looks like and for your review. Once the proposed recommend, once the pro, one proposed recommendation, involves engaging a third party entity to conduct a comprehensive evaluation of the existing security infrastructure. And we're happy to hear that governor of Governor Healy's grant award 
that will allow the districts, the district to start with this process. We recommend that the district hire a school security director to oversee all safety and security planning and bring in all the necessary partners to include fire and police. The second issue that we've encountered is classroom security. The security of classrooms within the high school poses a significant concern. Currently, teachers are able to lock their classrooms, but do not have the ability to unlock, leaving unsecured rooms, unoccupied rooms, unoccupied rooms unsecured. Presenting potential risk to the safety of students, the safety of students and staff. Compounding this issue, the circulation of the G submaster keys, some of which are unaccounted for, further compromising school security. Additionally, there have been instances of key distribution to unauthorized individuals, contrary to established protocols. As a short-term measure, we recommend the district establish a policy and protocol to instruct teachers to lock all classrooms when unoccupied, minimizing security vulnerabilities. Second, giving floor teachers the responsibility of unlocking classrooms and implementing regular checks to ensure all classrooms are securely locked at all times. As a long-term solution, we recommend the district explore, ex explore comprehensive security options such as rekeying rooms or transitioning to a FOB or a card access system. Implement stringent procedures for key issuance, key turn-in, and management to prevent unauthorized access. Empower key personnel to allocate access based on their job responsibilities, fostering accountability, and bolstering security measures. The third, is the third issue we've encountered is access control. There's several risks that have been identified concerning access control within the high school. The absence of a vestibule poses a significant security threat, allowing unauthorized individuals to gain entry. Individuals already inside the building accessing entry point introduce significant vulnerabilities. Access control officers lack adequate training and visibility. Their position in relation to metal detectors, a lack of clarity regarding their roles and responsibilities. Pictures on IDs are not current, leading to inaccuracies or inability in identification. Absence of alarm systems on doors exasperates the risk of breaches going unnoticed. Over-reliance on reactive measures leaves gaps in proactive threat detection and response. Assist yeah, you're right, Tyrone. Existing cameras are primarily utilized in a reactionary manner rather than active monitoring. To address these concerns, we recommend the district implement comprehensive training programs for access control officers to enhance their visibility, ensure clean, clear understanding of responsibilities, and ensure active monitoring of metal detectors. Establish a protocol for annual ID picture updates for students, staff, and teachers to maintain accurate identification records. Introduce a pre-processing right, center or vestibule to prevent unauthorized entry for all. Establish a centralized command center staffed by security personnel to monitor all entrances in real time and deploy the limited resources accordingly therefore enhancing physical security, operational efficiency, and situational awareness. The fourth issue is personnel training. Inadequate training of personnel has been identified as an issue to address. For this, we recommend that the district perform a thorough review and refine the roles and responsibilities for access officers, security and safety officers, and floor teachers in an effort to boost effectively and clarity in their duties. Enforce stringent vetting procedures alongside comprehensive training protocols for all security personnel. Yeah, I mean, I think the bottom line is this, and, and Sarah, you make a good point. Sarah says, I, yeah, I feel like if they didn't call the National Guard, they wouldn't be talking 
about it right now. So it's it's kind of a good thing, I guess. And, and I think that's what the purpose of this whole was, to shake up the system. Let's start shaking out everybody and seeing what they're going to do to fix this. But the bottom line is, and I do, I feel very confident about uh, Chief Perez and Principal McCatskill. I think you have two great people uh, in in positions of leadership, but the poorest people in positions of leadership are above them. Sullivan, Thomas, Healy. Um, they're a mess. And it's going to come down to what they're going to allow these two skilled individuals with a plan uh, allowing them to do. That's the bottom line. And wait until we get to the end and you see the fireworks. This is... You're going to see a clear example of how Brockton High has been run in the last 10 minutes of this video. It's a clear example of what's going on. This measure ensures that they are professionally trained to handle their responsibilities, assess and optimize the deployment strategy of all security personnel to ensure maximum coverage and efficiency across all areas of concern. Brockton Police and Brockton School Police are here to assist and work with the school district. You're right, Turtle. The school committee, safety subcommittee, and school security director in any way necessary to ensure the safety of students, teachers, and staff. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Members, members of the committee, any uh, questions for Chief Perez at this time, please? Uh, Ms. Azak, please. I'll start off. Thank you, Chief Perez. Um, Thank you for the presentation. So a lot of the items that you touched base on, we have been asking for those. Um, more training, things like that. Um, some stuff I think, you know, Excuse me. should be discussed in executive session as to how we do things. It is safety, and we really don't want to be putting everything out there um, as to what we're going to be doing as far as doors, keys, things like that. So I believe our, our attorneys here, I believe that does fall under our executive session. So I wasn't aware there was meetings happening as far as, you know, we do have a safety, traffic, and transportation. Jody, subcommittee. I agree. This is the first I've heard of meetings happening within the city. Within, I'm glad that they were happening. It's just the committee was not aware. I know I wasn't aware. I'm not sure about other members. Um, Rachel says, "Don't so believe her." We do have a subcommittee, and our subcommittee should have known <laughs> what's going sense. on, and we could have worked Thank as you, a Chief. committee Great word salad to implement some of these um, ideas and some 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 steps that you're recommend recommending. I would recommend to just probably discuss, I have a few questions, but I'd rather do them in executive session because it is safety and security. Okay. Um, and it's not something we want to put on camera. So if our attorney could probably, we can schedule something. Absolutely. Can, but thank you so much for the presentation. I'm glad that there was meetings. It's just some of us weren't aware of them, but thank okay. you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Azak. Excuse me. Any other questions for the Chief at this time? Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, please. I said I wasn't going to ask any questions, but when when you look at the uh, Director of Safety and Security, that's already in our policy that that position exists. I requested that two years ago. Uh, I went on deaf ears. Um, but most of this is m during our uh, subcommittee meetings that we've discussed. This was already. And, and again, you're seeing the communication problem. That is one of the biggest problems here. Communication, leadership. Balancing a budget, none of these people can do it. They're all responsible for this. And like I said, listening to the way that they're all talking in this meeting, they're kicking the can down the road and kicking the can on everybody else. They're they're pointing fingers. It's not my problem. It's not my problem. I called for that. I called for that. I did this. I did that. What is the solution? Step up, be a leader in the position you are paid for. Brought to the forefront, and I thank you for your for your work in actually assessing this. Um, you know, thank you to the governor. Yes, it worked. It worked, and we brought light to it. It did, and I'm, I'm glad the community stepped You're right, up. Right, Jody. Glad the it comes down to that money, the kids that suffer in the right end now. Mm. because doing an audit is going to take time to hire uh, personnel. The money that she should have sent is the money to for us to hire security staff. On top of that, hiring the educators into the classroom. But I thank you for this. But I think this discussion needs to be done in executive session because it does uh, involve security of, of the district. So, thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Any other, Mr. Mr. Gomes, please. 
um, just to go off of what they said, also uh, took notes while you're talking. I do appreciate the time you guys put into this, but all of the things that were mentioned, we've already covered. Like the ID. Um, oh, yeah, recovery, Scott, absolutely. Uh, it was nice talking to you today. So Thank you. And even the cold. Uh, we were freezing. security director position, we've gone over those. So I was looking more forward to, forward to what are we doing about those things? Like, for instance, access control. Do we have more staff to help with that? Yeah, if anybody follows uh, the Karen Reed case, uh, we did a standout today down in Canton at uh, DA Morsi's office, and I did a live for about an hour and 20 minutes, so if you want to go up back and watch that after this, you can. We were talking out there, and we had some great interviews out there. I got some great interviews today. All right. Are you guys going to provide more security personnel to come and patrol, things like that? Exactly. I won't ask the specific questions that I have. We can do it in executive session, but... Uh, oh, majority of those me. things we've already talked about. Um, <laughs> I look forward to hearing what we're going to do about those things, if anything. Okay. Well, thank you for the question. And staff, when it comes to access control, are under the direction of the superintendent of schools. So they're employees of the school. So he would be better able to answer that question. Any other members have any questions? I got interviewed by Canton Cable today. today. Dr. Cobbs was on the show. His name was Tim. One thing I think would be important for the public to know: um, this was not under your watch. You're the new I did. I filled in for Tommy, first female chief in the history of Brockton. But you're a proud Brocktonian and Brockton high grad. And you tell me that all the time. Um, But when you began your due diligence on this, one thing that uh, came to light was that. some determinations was made a while ago that SROs, the school resource officers, school police uh, could only be on the first floor. They wouldn't go to the second floor or third floor, but you've changed that. Could you just express that so that people know that? Yeah, it was Canton that, Cable. Thank you, Mayor. That's yeah, true. He's really when nice. When we nice guy. Um, started this process of looking at and of course, you know, safety. He comes up to me and he goes, is that Will? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not Will. <laughs> schools uh, it came to light that basically under a previous administration we, our school resource where, where can i see it where can i see the interview i i was just rambling a whole bunch of stuff off <laughs> it was i wasn't ready he kind of just turned me say hey, can i ask you some questions i was like sure i didn't know what uh what he was gonna ask and uh we were, we're not allowed to go on to the second and third floor and we're basically restricted at the high school to the first floor. <laughs> yeah, it was. So um, Dr. Cobbs, the mayor and I, we've discussed this and that's th- something that's, you know, not acceptable. Our school resource officers are here to basically integrate with our students and become a part of that school community. So that's since changed and we're happy to hear that. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions? Uh, follow up from Ms. Azak, please. Um, that's a, uh, it's just more of a statement. So under superintendent. Keep in mind, in about five to eight minutes, things are going to really, really heat up in this meeting. In Thomas's um, administration, when we had talked about the vestibule, and I believe there's plans, but at the time, I believe the fire fire chief, it didn't pass, and and that's why it's really important. I know we don't have the money, but it's years no out, money. and I, I believe the new plan with the school, if everything goes well. We will have that vestibule. Yeah. It will be a safety because as soon as they scan and go right in, again, the stuff I don't want to put on camera, but it would it would make more sense to have that vestibule right in the beginning, right in the front area where administration is, like we have with all our other schools. Superheated. Um, You're gonna see but I know it thing. was shot down, and it, I know that there's plans out there somewhere, and and they worked on them years ago. So hopefully one of these days we will have that. But I mean, it's a great idea. It's just it it, it didn't move forward. Um, and it was just not too long ago they worked on that, probably within the past six years, five, six years. We have a, a, a different plan and scaled down from the original one, I think. This it's guy, doable more. The interim quick. superintendent. Which makes more sense here. given, again, it's stuff that don't want to be I feel there. more comfortable talking about, com- you know, right. with we'll the chief one on one. Executive session. We also have a new fire chief. Within the last oh, Chief Nardelli, 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 correct. We'll get Nardelli. It to high grad, mm-hmm. So that would be helpful. Mm-hmm. We have all these alumni. Right. Yes. So it's awesome. We do. And I'm available and my team is available for any conversations. And I'm sure that these conversations are going to be up ongoing as, as we move on. So I would hope so. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank have a good night. I am going to read uh, agenda item six. Okay. I'm going to have an attorney, Sarah Spotter, for this here tonight. And we have to get a receipt. 
This is really where things are going to heat up now. Get ready. Get your popcorn ready. Watch this dynamic. You ready? Here we go. Um, I'm going to read number six in the record. Uh, executive session, which is Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, superintendent, CFO, deputy CFO. Second matter, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A1, to discuss the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than professional competence of an individual or to discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual, uh, Michael Thomas. Uh, Attorney Spotterford, please. Yes, so tonight we have two executive session matters, one of which, um, the second one, the purpose one matter, uh, Superintendent Thomas has exercised his right to have that in open session. Uh, this first matter, however, is one that would be in executive session. Uh, so we would be adjourning to executive session outside of this room for the first matter, but then returning to open session uh, for the second matter concerning Superintendent Thomas. Any questions on that? Then like we have to do for executive go. sessions in the past, I need to entertain a motion at this time to go into executive session, but we will be coming back. Motion, motion to, to go into executive session. Second. Uh, Second. Ms. Azak, Second. followed by Ms. Ehlers. All, all in favor? All in favor, kindly raise your hand. Raise your hand. All opposed, okay. raise your hand. Yep. I will need to read the roll now. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Ehlers? Yes. Mr. Gomes? Yes. Ms. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Azak? Yes. And I'm a yes as well, but we will be coming back. BCA, please don't shut off. We will be coming back, Mike. So essentially what happened is they went in and voted uh, Thomas out to put him on a paid leave. And we'll just speed up. It's going to come back. We're coming back in the session at this time. BCA, are we on? Thanks, Mike. Uh, at this time, uh, we are back. They didn't want to do it in front of the public. So they ran because they knew there'd be fireworks in that room. But I don't, I just don't understand how, I, and again, you know, it goes back to my first part of the stream. You know, Superintendent Mike Thomas says, and you're going to hear him say it. If I was here, all these problems wouldn't be happening. Well, one, you couldn't balance the budget. You knew there was a $14.4 million deficit, and in the odd timing that you go out and take a, a leave, again, you couldn't balance the budget. You were deputy superintendent back in 2013, all the way up until 2019, when you were put into being uh, promoted into superintendent. And we went back, all of the violence that happened from 2013, all the way up until the current day. So how can you sit there and say none of these problems would be happening in Brockton High if I was still the appointed superintendent and still the active, well, he's still the superintendent, but the active superintendent. I, I don't get it. And everybody's cheering this guy. He couldn't balance a budget. He couldn't, he can't account for where money is. He said he overspent. He was, he's not a leader. You'll hear it. This is insane. It's the most insane thing. Formal session. Attorney Spiderford, please. Total gaslighting. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're here tonight under purpose one to discuss uh, Superintendent Thomas. The reason that we called this meeting tonight, it wasn't a planned action of the committee, but uh, Superintendent Thomas had notified the committee through council that he's well enough to return to work. He did so about a week and a half ago. He stated he was well enough to return to work on the 21st, uh, which was last Tuesday, Wednesday. This is an attorney. This is the, the attorney. Um, he previously had informed the committee that he required an extended medical leave, which the committee had granted. It became effective um, the last week of August, and he's been on extended medical leave. He had also previously notified the committee that he intended to retire on March 3rd. Um, he notified council, uh, the committee through council again last week that he was rescinding his retirement notice and was well enough to return to work. The committee had to meet to talk through. How was it, 
I, I just don't – I don't understand. Can someone explain to me – and I, maybe I need to have a Brockton resident come on here that supports my, Mike Thomas and just say, how – why are you cheering this guy? <laughs> he, he, he knew what was going on. He's part of the problem as to where you are now, why you've run out of money. I, I, I don't know. I don't get it. The, the quorum, please. The, quorum. the committee had to meet to talk through um, Dr. Thomas, Ms. Do Superintendent Thomas's return to work. Uh, so tonight, um, the committee needs to take action if the desire is to have Superintendent Thomas remain out of work. Otherwise, Superintendent Thomas would return to work. Uh, if the desire is to have Superintendent Thomas remain out of work, I'm advising the committee to place him on paid administrative leave, effective uh, February 22nd, 21st, uh, so he wouldn't have used his sick time for that period of time since he was well enough to return to work. Uh, this attorney, is to preserve yeah. the integrity of the ongoing audit and investigation. It's not a disciplinary move. It's not contemplating discipline at this time, as we don't have the results of the audit or the city. Well, and that's the thing, and I'm going to stop this, and I know I've been talking a lot, but that's the thing, is he's going to come in and say, I've been here for 30 years. 30 years I've given my, my, this community my services. Well, Mike, you fucked up, and you fucked up really bad. You fucked up really bad. And I don't know how you're going to change this situation. You couldn't even do your job before you went out on leave. And now you want to come back and say, if it's all in my hands, I would be able to fix this. And people are cheering him, cheering him. <laughs> it's unbelievable. All right, let's back up a little bit. Work. Uh, if the desire is to have Superintendent Thomas remain out of work, I'm advising the committee to place him on paid administrative leave, effective uh, February 22nd, 21st. Uh, so he wouldn't have used his sick time for that period of time since he was well enough to return to work. Uh, this is to preserve the integrity of the ongoing audit and investigation. It's not a disciplinary move. It's not contemplating discipline at this time, as we don't um, have sure. the results of the audit or the city investigation to rely upon. Uh, so that is my advice that the um, and it's consistent with how the district and the city and every public employer handles employees who are have any allegations against them to give both protect the employee and protect the integrity of the investigation. So that would be my advice that the committee placed uh, Superintendent Thomas on paid administrative leave effective uh, February 21st. Happy to answer any questions. The sailors, please. It's going to get interesting. On paid administrative leave effective February 21st. We can't hear. Second. So, form of a motion. Motion pro to approve Superintendent Thomas to go out on paid administrative leave effective February 21st. Mm -hmm. motion, made on the motion. motion was made by Mrs. Ehlers. It was properly seconded by Mrs. Sullivan. Uh, all in favor of that motion, kindly raise your hand. Nay. 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 Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Are you shitting me right now? Motherfucker. That, that's a, a city committee meeting member right there on mic saying that. that. This is this is why Brockton High is the way it is. Do you under can you clearly see what's going on here? This is out of control. This is this is this is the leadership in Brockton right now. That are that are leading your your children. No matter, no wonder why things are a mess there. I'm gonna go back so we can hear it again. So a vote, what happened? So they vote, a vote came up in that executive uh, session that was not. They discussed his leave. Essentially, put all the cards on the table when they came out. Talked about what they talked about, and then there was a motion to vote him out and put Mike Thomas out on administrative leave where he just came back from a medical. He wants to come back to his job and they don't want him there because there has been rumors that he has embezzled money and that's why it left uh, let to this deficit. And you're going to hear Thomas speak here in a moment. I'm holding every single person in that room responsible for what happened. No one is innocent in this situation. They know that all of this has been going on. And I'll go back to what John C. Williams did. And, and uh, 
He said those three words. What did he say before he left the mic? Do your job. Do your job. All right, let's play. Be my advice that the committee placed uh, Superintendent Thomas on paid administrative leave effective uh, February 21st. Happy to answer any questions. Ms. Ehlers, please. So she has the power to put the motion. I don't know who she is, uh, what her position is in this meeting. Maybe she's head of the council, uh, but she's asking permission to put permission to put the motion in, in basically forward to put him out on paid leave. Everybody's going to say, yeah. Second. So the form of a motion. Now she's being, she's going to gaslight here with the microphone. That, that little twitch, the, the, the turn on the mic. Questions? Ms. Sailors, please. Superintendent Thomas to go out on paid administrative leave effective February 21st. We can't hear. Second. So form of a motion. Motion to approve Superintendent Thomas to go out on paid administrative leave effective February 21st. Motion was made by Mrs. Ehlers. It was properly seconded by Mrs. Sullivan. Uh, all in favor of that motion, kindly raise your hand. Nay. 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 Oh my God, are you kidding me? Are you shitting me right now? Motherfucker. Sullivan's pissed. We have to do. We have to. We have to do decorum, please. We gotta put a vote. It, 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 it technically doesn't have to be because no one's on Zoom. It technically doesn't have to, but I'll honor that. Uh, there's a motion made. It was properly second. I will do a roll call vote on this matter. Mrs. Sullivan. Uh, Mrs. Ehlers. Yes. Mr. Gomes. Yes. Uh, Ms. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Ms. A. What you heard was the public first. The public was in the back. And they said, nay, no one said anything, but the public in the back watching the meeting said, yeah, uh, yes. She, uh, I don't think she walked out or was getting up to walk out. Is that? Yes. And I'm, a yes. I'm, a, I'm a yes as well. So that does pass. However, uh, Superintendent Thomas is here. Um, what? Just one question. What? What is the uh, scope of discussion before us tonight? Sure. So, Superintendent Thomas, under open meeting law, has the right to respond to to talk for himself on the deliberations before the committee. So, the so that would just be limited, since the committee is not taking any disciplinary Dead action tonight. Parker. That would just be Dead. limited to the vote of uh, to put him on uh, paid she administration. Said, "Are you shitting me, motherfucker?" She said it. Thank you, Superintendent Thomas. Please. All right, it's getting it interesting. Now, I don't know why you're cheering this guy because, you know, I just talked about it. The budget deficit, the non-leadership, the non-balancing of the budget, but this guy all of a sudden is the, is the guy that's going to save everybody because he's been there for 30 years, and if he was in power, none of this stuff would be going on in Brockton. <laughs> okay. Listen, I don't want to get down on anybody. If someone's sick, they're sick. I, I can't get down on him for that. If he's sick, he's sick. But 14.4 million, come on, man. Thank you. 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 Um, committee, I understand. I want to say nice to see you all. Um, um, I understand, you know, what you had to do. It's unfortunate that you pay me all this money and you have me sitting out when you know I can make a difference. Uh, and I also want to say, I also want to say, this is the first time I've spoken in six months. Um, I gave this district 30 years see, of my that, life. That's the whole... I am entitled. I gave 30 years. 
I should be here. You know what, dude? You, you lost almost $15 million. Where's the money? Where's the money? And you're going to come in and say that you're going to be able to fix this? Come on, bro. And none of these people in this room know how to do their job. They're all failed leaders. They have failed Brockton High School. They failed the teachers and the students inside that high school. Every single one of them would be should be fired. If I was if I if I was the governor, I'd fire every single person in that room. Thirty years, and I put my misguided trust into somebody who I thought was a friend. Now he's talking about Sullivan. Who led an embezzlement rumor. He's talking about Mayor Sullivan. Wout knowing me and refuse to put it to bed. I would never do that to anybody, especially a friend. Leadership is taking responsibility. I went on TV. I took responsibility. Do we now, all he's saying that he should still be here because he came out and said, I screwed up. I'm taking responsibility here. So I should still be in my position and I should be in a position of power and leadership. You know what it is? You know what it is? He already said it. I'm going to. Do you know why he wants to be there? Do you know why he wants to be in power? I'll let you answer in the chat. Why does he want to be there? He already gave you a, a clue. He already gave you a clue. And if I need to go back and replay it, I will. But why does he want to be there? And I think someone said it in the chat earlier too. Why does he want to be there? Nope. What does it come down to? No, it's not ego. Why does he want to be there? That's right, Susan. The money. You pay me a lot of money. And it's a shame that I have to sit out on the sidelines. The money. That's right. Because he knows if he gets booted out, his ass ain't getting that salary. I think someone put his salary up or close to a salary that $200,000 a year. Insane. Audit. Back up. And I'm sorry, I've been pausing and stuff. So let's let's back up a little bit more. Let's hear Mr. Thomas speak again. Thank you. Can Mr. Redcutter has the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, committee, I understand. I want to say nice to see you all. Um, um, I understand, you know, what you had to do. It's unfortunate that you pay me all this money and you have me sitting out when you know I can make a difference. Uh, and I also want to say, People that are I also want to say, this is the first time I've spoken in six months. Um, I gave this district 30 years yeah. of my life. That's ego right there. 30, 30 years. years right. And I put my misguided trust into somebody who I thought was a friend who let an embezzlement rumor go out knowing me and refused to put it to bed. I would never do that to anybody, especially a friend. Leadership is taking responsibility. I went on TV. I took responsibility. Do your audit. Do your personal investigations. Please come look at my credit cards. Look at my bank accounts. Look at whatever you want to look at in Mike Thomas's background. Because Mike, I meet people that talk about themselves in the third person too. Listen, I'm so glad that I have about 180 people in this room tonight, and I'm so glad that I have most of my local Massachusetts people here in this room tonight. Because I want you to understand, this is not only just going on in Brockton. It's not only going on in Canton. This is going on in your town too. And this is why I always say, and I know you get sick of probably saying this, is you need to look into your political officials that are running your uh, districts and your towns and your cities. If shit like this is going on, missing money, and you see it in the headlines in your local paper, you need to start investigating it. Who are these people? Where is that money going to? Why are things not getting fixed in our schools? You know, like here, where I lived, uh, where I live. Uh, a high school that they just built and went from this type of budget all the way up to this budget. And they promised everybody in, in this city, Oh, your taxes aren't going to go up. And everybody believed it. And they voted for this overpriced, ridiculous high school, $180 million 
and I drive by it and I go, that's what $180 million look like. And now my taxes aren't going to go up. And then everybody gets their tax bill and they go, hey, my taxes went up. Well, why did you think they went up, idiot? You voted for it. The cinder block school. So again, go out and pay attention to your local, your local cities and towns, where you live. That's where you make the difference. These national elections, eh. It's where you live. It starts in your community. And people like this that just kick the can down the road. I should be here 30 years. Oh, it's a shame. You're paying me all this money and I'm sitting on the sidelines. Mike Thomas never took a dime from the Brockton Public Schools. And I was made out to be a common thief. Within 48 hours, I went on medical leave. My phone was shut off. My email was shut off. And that was it. Thrown to the side after 30 years of impeccable service. Impeccable. And that's how I was treated. We went over the, we went over the years. We went over the years. Violence still continued in Brockton High School under this guy. Yeah, there's supposed to be an audit. Where's the audit? We we again they talked about that six months they've been talking about it. All right, let's keep playing. And I don't have any problem with the school committee. You know who I have a problem with. It's Sullivan. Somebody that I thought was a friend and a colleague didn't have the guts to stand up for somebody he knew for a long time. And another blame. You know what? I knew we had blame. I know we had a. I, I want to go back and hear what that person yelled out of the crowd. I know I'm talking a lot. I'm sorry. All right, let's play this. Public school. And I was made out to be a common thief. Within 48 hours, I went on medical leave. My phone was shut off. My email was shut off. And that was it. Thrown to the side after 30 years of impeccable service. And that's how I was treated. And I don't have any problem with the school committee. You know who I have a problem with. Somebody that I thought was a friend and a colleague didn't have the guts to stand up for somebody he knew for a long time. And you know what? I knew we had a, I know we had a, I know we bought a transportation company, but I didn't think everyone, you'd get in every bus and drive it over me. I really did not think that. He's playing victim The community now. knows me. <laughs> and I'm not putting the current administration down. Please. I worked with all of them. I hired most of them. But if Mike Thomas was here, this stuff at the high school, you know, would not be happening. Are you serious, dude? Bro, are you serious? This is the most biggest line of bullshit I've ever heard in my entire life. This guy is feeding so much bullshit. They're all responsible. Every single person in that room that is in a position of power to handle what goes on in Brockton High School all should be fired. All of those people. Because I'm telling you, they've been kicking the can down the road for a long time. A long time in this situation. Not a chance. And I want to say another thing. The money's the same where it was before. Transportation, special ed, okay? These are costs we could not absorb. And did I overstaff the schools? You're damn right I did. You're damn right I did. And, and I take, and I'm the only one so far who has taken responsibility for that. The only one. And I asked... Mr. Clark. He's trying to save his 30-year reputation right now. That's what he's trying to do with all of the, the locals in the room. You know, the locals there, oh, I've been here a long time, 30 years. He's trying to save his reputation. He knows he fucked up, and he fucked up bad, and he looks like a moron. <clears throat> Listen, I ask, with all due respect, Mr. Plant, you guys have a ton of questions. You have two men on leave, Chris Correa and Aldo Petronio. Last I checked, these guys have had impeccable audits year after year after year. Aldo Petronio was recognized by the state. 
spoke to the governor, helped Kathy Smith get the SOA through. Now he's in. Attorney Spider for now he's incompetent. Not here tonight. That's okay, not I'm just saying. You need to have them here answering every question Mr. Plant has. That's transparency. That is transparency. Now I'm going to go, but let me tell you one thing. Oh. I am extremely dismayed that the public safety building is $34.5 million over budget. <laughs> Mayor, why haven't you? You should have stepped aside like I had to step aside. $34.5 million over budget. I'm telling you, this is what goes on in Brockton High every day. This is what goes on in the city of Brockton. No one knows how to run anything. They're all over budget. There's no communication. They all scream at each other. These are not leaders. These are not leaders. This is people that these are people that are not leading that community. This is a travesty to what's going on. And again, who suffers in the end? Students and teachers. Students and teachers. And I want to say one thing. Please. This is my Super last thing I want to say. Talking, please. Other than I love you all. Mayor, I watched you when you went to get the 14 and a half million. You said, and it's in the paper, I want to be very blunt, said Mayor Sullivan, the chair of the school committee. This is the city bailing out the school department. The school department is the city the department and of chapter 70 chapter 70 since 1993 has built out the city if that's the way the city looks at the school department we got a lot of problems but you can keep me on paid administrative leave i think it's a mistake i'll take my paycheck i'm ready to come back lines. and you need me back thank you thank you everybody He's going to sit there and collect his paycheck. All right. Here goes the mayor. So I want... Ladies and gentlemen, please. I want to be... I want to be very clear. I want to be very clear about something. We have currently an ongoing fair and uh, impartial external, yes, external, yes, it has external investigation. City Solicitor Bridges right here is running point. I am nowhere near that, but I will tell you this. I am acting, asking everybody, school employee, city employee, if you are applicable, take the time to be interviewed. I've already started to participate. I'll continue to participate. The other thing is when they come with their findings and their report, I said this and I'll say it again, that report is going public. We need to figure out what happened. People can finger point all they want. This People can insane, finger dude. point all they want. But I also want to be clear of this. You only, you only know what you know. I was not made aware of a fiscal 23 deficit until the date of August 8th. And that's a fact. Is there a motion to adjourn? See, what do we Motion do? to adjourn. Is there a second? All in favor? All opposed? Have a good night. Yeah, run away. He didn't want to answer the tough questions from the public. So what did he do? He ran away. I'm telling you, the next the next school committee meeting is going to be off the chain. This is Brockton. But this is how it's been operating down there for years. You're getting a preview of it right now. This is a snippet of what has been going on for years down there. There's no communication. There's no leadership. And no one knows how to balance a fucking budget there. I'm telling you. This is insane. All right, let's go back. I'm going to rewind that a little bit so you can hear the mayor again. And then we're going to we're going to wrap this one up. Here we go. Oh, I want Ladies and gentlemen, please. I want to be I want to be very clear. I want to be very clear about something. We have currently an ongoing fair and uh impartial external So he's talking about the audit. And you hear that you hear the people in the room say, "No, you haven't," because I'm telling you, it's been six months already. There hasn't been an audit. 
Uh, next meeting, uh, I'll have to check the schedule. Let's see. <sighs> I'll, I'm going to end up streaming it. You know that. Next one is, let's take a look. March 6th, I believe. It's March 5th or 6th. Let's see. 2023, we got one on the 7th, March 7th. But there could be an emergency one, like most of these have all been the last uh, couple of weeks. Hey, Oh, I'm sorry. That was the wrong schedule. Let me look at this one. February 6th, March 5th. March 5th is the next one. and um, But it could be in another emergency one before this. All right, let's listen to the mayor, and then we're going to finish the stream up. Listen, I appreciate everybody being here tonight and taking interest in what's going on in Brockton High School. Again, this is not only happening, uh, what is going on uh, here in Brockton it's happening in your community as well. And um, again, time to peel some layers back in these communities. All right, let's go. Yes, external. Yes, it has external investigation. City solicitor Bridges right here is running point. I am nowhere near that, but I will tell you this. I'm going to be streaming. I'm acting, asking everybody, school employee, city employee, if you are applicable, take the time to be interviewed. I've already started to participate. I'll continue to participate. The other thing is when they come with their findings and their report, I said this and I'll say it again. That report is going public. We need to figure out what happened. People can finger point all they want. People can finger point all they want. But I also want to be clear of this. You only, you only know what you know. I was not made aware of a fiscal 23 deficit until the date of August 8th. And that's a fact. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yeah. You got to run motion away. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All in favor? All opposed? Have a good night. Have a good night. I'll tell you, man, it's going down in Brockton. Yeah, Susan, that is it. Susan's got it. This is what corruption looks like, I guess. That's it. He says, I love how he slams the gavel down like Tom Theodore. Yeah. This is insane. I'm telling you, the next one is going to be nuts. It's going to be off the chain. It's going to be off the chain. And and it's sad because this is this is this is what's going on. Yeah, it was a rage quit. This, <laughs> this is what's going on every day in Brock. There's no communication there. There's absolutely zero communication. No one knows how to do their job. Uh, it is absolutely insane. You know, absolutely insane. And jeez, uh, man. It's just, he's, uh, he's like, I'm out of here. See you later. And it's just like this. Get to the chopper! get the hell out of here let's get to the chopper let's get the hell out of here so unbelievable unbelievable but that's what's going on in brockton it's crazy it's crazy <laughs> i love the rage quit he's like peace see you night. have a good night have a good night uh let's see you hang on one second So if anybody's just coming in the stream and they're like, what the hell is going on? Uh, let's do this. I'll just play this little clip it for you and I'm going to end the stream. So if you're wondering what's going on in Brockton, here it is. Little little re one minute recap. Tonight, there was shouting at the end of the meeting. There was also some cheering inside this school when the superintendent got up to speak. <laughs> Now that is superintendent. I want to go down there. He's been on medical leave since August. That leave coincided with the revelation of a fourteen million dollar deficit in the district. He now says he's well enough to come back, and he denies wrongdoing. But the school committee voted to put him on paid leave during an investigation of district finances. Now the crowd tonight was clearly on his side and says safety would not be an issue if he were in charge. The mayor is vowing transparency in that investigation. If Mike Thomas was here. This stuff at the high school, you know, would not be happening. Not a chance. I was not made aware of a fiscal 23 deficit until the date of August 8th. And that's a fact. 
Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All in favor? All opposed? Oh, Good night. Whoa. John, John C. Williams goes, you see it here, John C. Williams? He goes, you better adjourn, sucker. <laughs> Listen to John C. Williams. He says, you better adjourn it, sucker. <laughs> I got to get that guy on my show, man. John C. Williams, if you see this stream, reach out to me at Let's Talk Live Podcast at gmail.com. Listen to John C. Williams. You better adjourn it, sucker. Have a good night. Oh, let's go back. So, second, all in favor? All right there, opposed? Motion to adjourn is eighth, and that's a fact. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn is there a second? All in favor? All opposed? Have a good night. So the meeting ending abruptly there as the mayor was getting some pushback on that investigation from the crowd. In terms of safety in the district, a lot of ideas here tonight from the community, there. but no decisions made here. We're live in Brockton tonight, John Atwater, WCVB News Center. John All right, so if you want to hear about more about Brockton, hi, I'm going to be covering the story here. <laughs> Do you rage quit? I love that, the rage quit. But that place is a mess. Those, those people in position of power are just not people of power at all. And it's not only going on there. There's another situation that I'm hearing about going on in Dighton with an interim uh, police chief. And that's something that I may be looking into as well, because those community meetings are being, getting really big over there. I don't have uh, a lot of the information to speak on it right now, but it may be something that I look into. Uh, I've been trying to look for the streams and I can't find any of the Dighton um, committee meeting streams. So it, it, this is crazy. I And I'm glad that everybody's taking an interest in this um, and coming over and checking this stuff out because it's it's getting insane over there. And it's just sad because, again, you know, what we say is the, the ones in the end that are going to suffer are the students and the children. I, I'm sorry, the, the students and the teachers. You know, that's really who's suffering because I feel like there is a lot of teachers over there that just want to do their jobs but they want to make sure that they are protected and they want to make sure the students are protected. And this is, this is not leadership. What you just saw there in that one minute clip and in the last 20 minutes of that meeting that I played, that's not leadership. You know, people are just kicking the can down the road and blaming everybody else, but themselves. So um, again, it's just really, really crazy. And uh, I'll keep continuing the story. All right. I'm going to wrap this one up. Gee, I didn't think it was going to go this long, but we got about an hour and 47 minutes in. I appreciate everybody being over here. Next Wednesday, I'm going to look at a studio space and hopefully everything works out and I'll be getting this hopefully, hopefully into a, uh, a studio soon where I can start inviting in uh, live guests. I think that's going to be really amazing. And it's going to give me a lot more room in the studio to do a lot more things. I can do demonstrations and and whatever. We're just going to have a lot of fun with it. I think it's going to be a good time. So uh, I'm going to bounce out of here. I appreciate everybody coming in and watching the stream. Um, it is what, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I don't think I'm going to be streaming Friday or Saturday, but on Sunday night, if you are interested, please, and you are a Karen Reed uh, supporter and follower, I'm going to have Rita Lombardi on my show live, live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is the link. Click into the link, set your reminder, come join us, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. Rita Lombardi is going to be talking about her run for select board, uh, select board in Canton. And then on Tuesday night, I will be streaming the select board meeting. All right, everybody, have an amazing night. I will see you all soon. And thank you for supporting LTL. If this is your first time over here, please make sure to subscribe, like, and share, or comment down below once this posts. Everybody have a great night. I think Melanie Little might still be live. Go over and check out Melanie. If not, maybe someone else is streaming. I know uh, TB, Turtle Club, live at 930. Check them out. All right, everybody, have a good night. It was so awesome, by the way, to stand out with all of you out there in uh at da morsi's office if you didn't see the video you can watch that on my channel after this all right bye everybody have a good night peace yeah it's your true crimes we going deep in the dark yeah feeling back the layers it's both the hidden and mark yeah from the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie getting into minds of the wicked no alibi it's your true crime unravel in the web of evil no stone left unturned, we dive into the prime. 
Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime. LTL true crime, I'm feeling dark realities of the underground. Unraveling the web of evil. No stone left unturned. We dive into the front. Yeah, we digging up the dirt.